Hey guys, welcome back to the last part of these seasons, a how-to guide, tips and tricks. Uh, this time we're going to talk about time management, how to stay busy, um, and how to not uh, get bored uh, with respect to uh, playing with seasons. We're not all we're going to really do is just drive around and talk on this particular episode. So we have already learned uh, from part one that there are many different season lengths you could pick from. You pick from three day seasons, um, six day seasons, nine, 12, um, 15, uh, let's see here, 21, is there an 18? Might be an 18. Let's see here, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24 day seasons. So, this is my this is this is all my personal view on this thing. Um, I think I had heard at one point that the seasons folks wanted you to um, play with five times clock speed. That was the suggestion. So let's bump it up to five times clock speed. And uh, basically, what that equates out to is every one minute of real life is five minutes of uh, game time. So how does that really equate out to a full game day? Well, at one time speed, obviously it takes 24 real life hours of gameplay to equal 24 game hours. So at five times speed, and I should have done this math beforehand, it's 24 times divided by five. So it takes 4.8 hours of real life to equal one game day. Okay, so 4.8 hours of gameplay per game day. Uh, the other option on the, on uh, Farm Sim is 15 times speed. So 15 times speed, we take 24 divided by 15, and that is 1.6 hours for every day, game day. So for every 1.6 hours of gameplay, get one game day of uh, of time passing. Next option is 30 times speed. Well, that would be double uh, 15. So 1.6 divided by 2 would be what? 0.8. So for every 0.8 hours, um, which is going to be probably like 40 minutes, for every 40 minutes of gameplay, uh, you're going to have a game day go by. I cannot fathom anyone playing at 60 times speed. Uh, but then again, you could, or you could go 120, and then you would get absolutely nothing done. So realistically, we're looking at you would play at either one time speed, five times speed, or 15 times speed based on the in-game clock. Now it is possible to put a custom time in there, like for example, 10 times speed. So on my Midtown USA series, I am playing at 10 times speed because I decided. 15 times was just a little bit too quick for what I wanted to play at. Uh, so I wanted to back it down, but 5 times was too slow, so I picked 10. But you may ask, well, how do you pick a custom time that you can't just select in the in-game menu? It's pretty straightforward. Let me just show you. Let me pull off to the side here. Uh, let me do some magic and pull up a file, my career save game file from Farm Sim. For this particular game save and I will show you what I did so let's pull this up here what you can see now is this is my career save game XML and down here is time scale one. Well, if I change this value to a 10, okay? Now, obviously I would need to be out of the game, okay? So if I'm out of the save game, if I change this value to a 10 and save the file, next time I boot up, I am gonna have 10 times running on my clock. That is really all that's needed uh, to do a custom time. Now, if you go and change it, for example, for some reason you speed up or slow down, 
you're not going to be able to get back to 10 times until you go back in and edit that uh, line in your career save game file but that's how you can do a custom time speed you may you may pick that 10 is too slow and you wanted but 15 is too fast so you want to do 12 or something weird like that you can maybe maybe uh, 15 is too slow and you want to do 20x it's it's fine whatever you want so let's go back to basically one of the three main ways of time scales 1x or real time in my opinion 1x is only good if you're playing three day seasons um, playing any longer than three day seasons 1x is way too slow you're gonna basically fly through you're gonna have the chance to farm the entire map uh, if you play 1x and six day seasons you're gonna be completely done probably by day two of spring and have no idea what you're gonna do as far as field prep and planting uh, for the next four days and you're gonna be like season stupid because I have nothing to do I'm just just how do you play with you know a longer season you just run out of stuff to do well it's probably because you're playing too slow of a clock speed uh, for six day seasons nine day seasons I recommend 5x speed okay for 12 day seasons 15 day seasons I might recommend a custom time of 10x uh, for an 18 day day season, 21 day season, or a 24 day season. Do not do anything less than 15 times speed, or you're going to get burned out. You're going to find yourself at you know you're going to have the complete map plowed, fertilized, cultivated, seeded, and ready to go, and you're still going to be in early spring because your clock was running too slow so try to match your season length to one of the suggestions I made as far as clock speed so three day seasons 1x or 5x um, six or nine day seasons 5x uh, 12 or 15 day seasons try 15x try 5x and try 10 see which one you like anything greater than 15 day seasons pick 15 times speed okay uh, you're definitely going to still find yourself as if you feel like man I got a lot of work to do but not enough time to get done uh, because of the clock speed and that's what really makes seasons fun is that stress of am I going to be able to get everything done before I run out of time am I going to be able to get harvest in before rain I'm going to get harvest in before the freeze. Things like that. So, speaking of timing, let's also talk about the size of equipment that you use. Okay, so while we're over here on field one, it's not an overly small field by any stretch of the imagination. Let's go over here and see how big this field is, actually. And I'll give you a hint as far as long as I think it should take you to work this field. So field one is five hectares in size. Okay. So a field like this on this size of a map it's a fairly respectable field. It's not the largest, it's not the smallest, but it is definitely probably about, you know, it's right there along the average mid-size a big field I would say if you can plow this field in one game day start to finish then you're probably using a plow that's just about the right size and you're probably using a clock speed that's just about right um, in fact it may it may take you more than a day to plow this field or if you start plowing first thing in the morning you may be plowing into the late evening and that would be about right as far as time speed and equipment size I've seen lots of people play seasons and I'll see them play they'll make two big mistakes at least in my opinion they'll make two big mistakes one they'll play with a clock too slow 
And two, they'll play with way too big of equipment um, for their clock speed. Uh, they will basically be able to hammer out a... F they'll be able to plow a field in about a game hour. Uh, whereas in real life, you're not going to be able to plow anything in an hour. You're going to plow maybe the corner of a field in an hour. Um, this field here would take you longer than an hour in real life to plow it. Um, if you're using a giant plow on that size field then you're using the wrong equipment because you're not going to be able to get it moved around. So try to find a happy medium between field size, equipment size, and clock speed. Uh, I'll talk to you about Churn Farm. I played Churn Farm 24 day seasons. And you know what? I had very little free time in spring. Uh, I had, I think, 10 fields and I had 24 days to plow, cultivate, fertilize, and seed 10 fields. And you know what? It took me, <clears throat> I would say, probably 20 of those days to do all of that work. Um, I was playing at 15 times clock speed, and I was using 6 meter equipment. I think maybe the plow was 10 meters. I think that's where I cheated a little bit and had a little bigger plow. Uh, but I was using 10 meter seeders, or 6 meter seeders. I was using a... Um, little fertilized spreader. I was using a six meter cultivator um, and I was perfectly fine with the fact that it basically took me one game day to do cultivation on a field. It took me a game day to basically plant one field and I was perfectly fine with that, perfectly content. Um, another problem that I see a lot is somebody's playing with seasons and they are playing let's say nine day seasons, they've got one X clock speed, and they've got five hired workers out working on five different fields, and they're working on another field. You're going to run out of things to do pretty darn quick if you do that. And if you're going to have all that hired help, then bump that clock speed up to 15, uh, because you're going to need some help getting, keeping busy. Uh, the biggest problem is summer wouldn't think that summer would be a slow time for a farmer but it is because all you really have to do is literally watch the crops grow if you have animals you that could keep you busy one day out of three uh, as you feed your animals but uh, you know what are you going to do for the other two so you know you've got grass work uh, but if if you're like me, I don't like to run around here and mow every little bit of grass that's all around the sides of all these fields. I like to find a plot of grass that is dedicated to, you know, a field of grass, if you will. And that's what I like to mow. I don't like to run around and mow these little little side bits of grass here and there and, and basically become what I call a grass baron of the map. Um, but there is grass work to keep you a little bit busy. But if you're playing nine day seasons, you don't really want to be doing grass work for eight game days or, or six game days. Uh, if you figure that you've got uh, one game out, one day out of three is going to be feeding your animals. And you might find yourself up in the woods doing some forestry in the middle of summertime. And if you've ever done forestry in the middle of summer, that is not something you want to do. There's no way you want to be in the middle of the forest with a chainsaw chopping up wood and tossing it on a truck in the middle of summer. You need to figure out how to keep yourself busy during the summer. The best way of doing that is to bump up the clock speed and uh, use small equipment. Like I said, use small mowers. Uh, don't try to uh, use a jumbo baler or anything like that. Uh, winter. What do you do during winter? You got two options. You could do forestry, or you could find something else to do. Okay, forestry is okay. I did it. I did a lot of it, but you kind of get burned out on it pretty quick. Uh, so you need to find something else to do. So one strategy is to uh, put a bunch of stuff down at the BGA, build some bunkers, and even if they ferment and they're ready to go in early spring or early autumn, I mean, let them sit there deliberately waiting for winter. 
that'll give you something to do to uh, to unload the bunkers into the BGA digester over winter. It also happens to be, by the way, let's look at our season's price menu. Let's look at silage. It doesn't show it here, but it also happens to be a rather nice price point for silage bales. So when I was playing um, the Old Guy Farmers single player challenge, it was basically playing three game years, six day seasons at 15 times clock speed. Um, my strategy, which was a winning strategy, was to do just grass bales and just wrap them for silage. Well, what we learned is winter is the best time to sell silage bales. Gives you the best price. So you can expect that probably silage down at the BGA is going to have its best price in winter. So the perfect time to sell silage at the BGA is during the winter. Other things you can do during winter is obviously care for your animals. Um, hope you get some snow so you can spend some time plowing fields. Uh, but basically the key to uh, successfully playing seasons and not becoming so bored out of your skull that you don't know what you're doing is to try to size your equipment properly for the size fields. Remember this is no race. You are you're committed to nine day seasons. There will be three days for early spring, three days for mid spring, and three days for late spring. You get all your fields planted and harv and, and ready to go by the end of the third game day You've got six more days of spring to do nothing in. So you might as well just take your time, run the clock at a rate that you feel works for you. If you feel you're getting stuff done too quick, well, speed up the clock. Feel that you don't want to speed up the clock, then maybe you need to buy smaller equipment. Just either that or you're going to find yourself just sitting there like this. Doing a bunch of work and then sitting around, driving around the map at 120 speed, just waiting for things to happen. That's a boring way to play. It's more fun and exciting to play at the fringe of being able to actually get things done. Um, <clears throat> so like this map. The other thing is how many fields you own. So this map, you start by owning fields 12, 14, and 15. In my opinion, that is only good if you're doing three-day seasons and you're using really small equipment. Other than that, you're going to find yourself with nothing to do. So what I would really suggest is owning at least six fields. So if I were to play Goldcrest Valley and I were to um... and I were to start playing, I would own these six fields. Out From the outset, I would own these six. That would give me enough things to do for a six or nine day season. If I was playing nine day seasons, I would probably run at 15 times speed. If I was running six day seasons, I would probably run at 10 times speed. Um, just, to, uh, just, just for the fun and excitement. Uh, there are lots of maps that are seasons prepared that come where you own one field. That is just, no, nah, that's not going to work. You're not going to have enough things to do playing seasons with only, only owning one field. So, in my opinion, any seasons prepared map that really expects you to play seasons should start you out with at least five fields. Because you need stuff to do to keep yourself busy. That's why I like Churn Farm, because I didn't buy any fields from the start. I started the map owning 10 fields, which is what you got when you were when you start the map. You started with six meter plows, not with six meter plows, but you started with a six meter cultivator, six meter cedars. Uh, you started with a small fertilized spreader. So you started with smaller equipment. And if you play at a decent clip, decent clock speed, uh, it all worked out. You know, I didn't need to go run and buy a 15-meter cedar to hammer out a field in two game hours. 
uh, or less. So that's some things to think about, some strategies. Uh, but basically, if you find yourself with not enough work to do, think about a couple things. One, how many fields do you own? If you don't own at least five, pick up a couple. Two, are you running at one times clock speed? Then bump it up to five. If you're running at five times clock speed, bump it up to the custom 10. See how that works for you. If you're running at 10, try 15. Uh, if you are already running at 15 and you're already bored and you don't know what you're doing uh, to, uh, to finish out the season, then use smaller equipment. You might not want to use smaller equipment, but you know what? Sometimes that's the fun in seasons is using stuff that you haven't done before, doing different strategies. So let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know what you think about the series. Uh, this is the last video of my season's how-to guide, tips and tricks. Uh, let me know if there are things that you are curious about that I didn't cover. And I may basically come in at a later date and supplement these nine videos with some more. Uh, so until next time, happy farming.